yogis, welcome to the second session of Yoga Lattes. We will be upping the, uh, the strength movement. So if you want to refer to the first Yoga Lattes in terms of the necessary strength required in Chaturanga, etc., check that first video out. Uh, for today's session, we need two bricks. If you don't have two bricks, have two pillows. Yes. So get your props if you don't have one around you. And for today's yoga lattes, please feel free to play some upbeat music for today's session. Uh, whilst we wait for people to set up the music, set up the props for today's class, uh, just a brief fresh on yoga lattes. When we do the three sets to uh, condition the strength in the muscles, if at any time you feel like I need to take a break, please feel free to take a break. Yeah. So in yoga, we never want to push through the edge of the resistance. Okay? We're building necessary strength so you don't injure yourself, so you don't injure your joints or injure your muscles. And we want to slowly build that strength yeah? where you can Feel the optimal space where you can really equalize comfortably the length between the inhale and the exhale. So when you're out of breath, yes, we're pushing through those resistance. And of course, when we're doing the conditioning drills, there's no uh, necessity to keep the ujjayi breath up. You can breathe comfortably if you want to breathe the belly breath to, you know, bring the body temperature down, you're more than comfortable to do the natural belly breath in the drill. Okay, so let's start. So come into table top, shoulders above the wrist, hips over the knees, and place the uh, hands on the brick, yeah. or on the pillow if you don't have any. And then for those who are really open with your shoulder, you can place the brick on the medium height. Or if you're really adventurous with your shoulders, you can place the brick on the medium height. Okay. And then tuck the toes, and we're going to place the elbows in the middle of the brick, however high the bricks are. Yeah. If you have um, just two pillows, it will be on the low side. And we're going to bring the hip through, and then palms together and then bring the head through even more down through the upper arms and then bring the fingertips between the shoulder blades and allow this moment to let go of the residue of the day so far with each and every breath. Create a small space between the teeth which softens the jawline Allowing the inhale to lengthen and the exhale to deepen. As the breath slows down, set an intention for your practice today, whether it's how you want to feel, how you want to move, or sending a wish out to the universe. tabletop position. Fingers spread wide like sunburst, crease of the wrist parallel to the short of the mat. So depending on your anatomy, it might be your middle finger or your index finger facing forward. And from here, make a circular motion around the crease of the wrist. At any time, you can move the other way, counterclockwise. And if there's a spot that doesn't feel right in the wrist spot there for a few moments rather than passing by through that sensation. Yeah. And breathe comfortably here, whether it's in the ujjayi breath or the belly breath. And inhale, come into neutral. Place the palm 
palms facing towards the sky, fingers pointing towards each other, bringing the shoulders above the crease of the wrist. If this is too much, you can back away, rocking back and forth. If shoulders above the wrist with the straight arms, okay, small or big cat and cow. Listening to the sensations in the wrist. Then start that ujjayi breath or the belly breath with the movement. Yeah. With the ujjayi breath, when we inhale through the nose, if we all have the Adam's apple, we're trying to bring that towards the back of the throat. So there's that slight constriction in the back of the throat, swirling the air around the jaw, all the way to the back of the ears. We exhale this that ha sound with the intention to fog your window. So it's that hot breath, bring the body into, I mean, bring the hot breath into the body. But if you prefer that belly breath because you feel a little bit of heat and you want to cool down, that's fine. And inhale, come into neutral and place the hands on the floor. Fingers pointing towards the front and rock the shoulders back and forth. A nice counter stretch. And come into neutral. And then we're going to extend the legs to plank. Where the shoulders are stacked above the wrist and where you can Really comfortably mount the balls of the feet and then drop the knees here and arch the back. Yeah. So we're going to really find the engagement in the whole body. We're going to first tuck the tailbone now, not arching the back, but tucking the tailbone down. Suction Udiyama, as if you're trying to sew three fingers below the navel towards the spine. Expanding the space between the shoulders, pushing away the mat through the arms and tucking the lower ribs in. And then from here, creating that, in, maintaining that integrity, you're gonna hover the knees and hold it for three, two, one, and exhale lower and arch the back and allow the heart to collapse. Once more, tuck the tailbone down, expanding the space between the shoulder blades, maintaining the integrity, hover the knees and hold it for three, two, one, but this time extend the legs, squeezing the quads, the inner thighs, the outer hips. I hope you remember from the first session, imagine there's a brick between your inner thighs. For three, two, one, and exhale, lower the knees and allow the, the heart to sink, the arched back, so we know what to do, the opposite. So one last time, we're gonna tuck the tailbone down, expanding the space between the shoulder blades and hover the knees for three, two, one, extend the leg. Really squeeze the inner thighs, the quads, outer hips, yeah, making sure you're not arching the back, collapsing the heart. For three, two, one, and exhale, lower the knees and rest in child pose. Yeah. So at any time in today's session, if you feel like you want to rest in chapels at any time, please feel free, free to do so. Yeah. So come into downward dog and pedal the legs out. Yes. So whenever the hands are on the mat, fingers are spread wide like somber, squeeze of the wrist parallel to the short in the mat. And for those who are hypermobile, make sure that the eye of the elbow, where the nurses take the blood from the veins, is facing the thumb. It's tracking towards the thumb. Yeah. And pedal the legs out. And if you want to open the side of the ribs, you can sway the hips and then heels from side to side when you're on the balls of the feet. For three, two, one, and inhale, come into neutral, and lift the heels, curling the spine, coming into plank, and lower the pubic bone down, but still hovering, and inhale, lift the chest up, collarbone open, and exhale into downward. Once again, inhale, lift the heels, curl the spine, shoulders above the wrist, and exhale, lower the pivot bone down by hovering, and inhale, lift the chest up, collarbone open. This is called floating up dog. 
and exhale into downward dog. Once more, inhale, lift the heels, curl the spine, shoulders up off the wrist, and exhale, bring the pubic bone down, and inhale, lift the chest collarbone, open and hold it here. If you want to go into upper dog, you can untuck the toes, squeezing that inner thighs, the quads, outer hips. Imagine you're squeezing that brick between your inner thighs. You can micro bend the elbows if it's too much, and then inhale into downward dog and adjust the hands and adjust the feet. Once more, inhale, lift the heels, curl the spine, shoulders above the wrist, and exhale, bring the pubic bone down, and inhale, lift the chest up. Or you can untuck the toes into upper dog for three, two, one, and exhale into downward dog. And breathe here for a few breaths. For the next one, we're going to go from downward dog into floating up dog, and then modify chaturanga. Inhale, lift the heels, curl the spine, shoulders up off the wrist, and exhale, bring the pubic bone down. Inhale, lift the chest up, collarbone open, and drop the knees, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, untuck the toes, drop the belly, lift the chest up into upper dog, and exhale into downward dog, and adjust the hands and adjust the feet. Yeah. And then for the next one, if you want to do the full chaturanga with the legs straight, you may. For those who find chaturanga quite challenging with a straight leg, you can always drop the knees. Okay, so inhale, lift the heels, curl the spine, shoulders above the wrist, exhale, bring the pubic bone down, inhale, lift the chest up, collarbone open, drop the knees into modified chaturanga or exhale chaturanga. Inhale, untuck the toes, drop the belly, lift the chest up, and exhale into downward dog and adjust the hands and adjust the feet and drop the knees. Okay? So we will use a pillow or a brick between your inner thighs just to uh, do a quick reminder on what that feels like in the engagement of the inner thighs, the quads, outer hips. It supports your lower back keeping yeah, the tailbone tucked rather than arching. Yeah, so you can place the brick between your inner thighs, narrow or wide, or a pillow, so come into downward dog. Yes, and then inhale, lift the heels, curl the spine, shoulders above the wrist, exhale, bring the pubic bone down, and inhale, lift the chest up, and you can exhale, drop the knees, or into chaturanga. Inhale, untuck the toes, squeeze that brick, lift the chest up into upward dog, and exhale into downward dog, and adjust the hands and adjust the feet. Inhale, walk the hands back towards the feet. And exhale, bend the knees, allowing the belly to rest on the upper thighs. And rock the feet back and forth. If you prefer, ragdoll grabbing the elbows. And allowing the head to bob up and down or shake the head from side to side. Whatever feels good for you. For three, two, Wow. And inhale, reach the feet into the floor as you come all the way up, arms and head, tucking the tailbone down. And exhale, samasthiti. So remove the brick. Now to the side. So we're going to do a little bit of flow, but still conditioning. Yeah, I hope you will enjoy it. Inhale, raising the arms up. And exhale, fall forward. You can always bend the knees. Chest towards the thighs, then slowly straighten the leg, looking between the toes. And inhale, walk the hands away, shoulders up off the wrist. And you can do your chaturanga from a straight leg or bent knee. Shift the shoulders forward, creating that 90 degree angle, halfway down. And inhale, untuck the toes, drop the belly, lift the chest up into upper dog. And exhale into downward dog. And adjust the hands and adjust the feet. Place the feet together. And then inhale, raise the right leg into three-legged dog. Hold here and then breathe. The foundation is actually not the right leg. It's the standing leg, the left leg. And squeezing the left quads, lifting the left kneecaps up. If your hamstrings are tight, of course you can be on the left balls of the feet. And exhale, bring the right knee into the chest, shoulders above the wrist and hold it. Yes. So what we're trying to do is trying to point the toes not pointing the toes down, but pointing the toes, where you can bring the heel to the right buttocks, pushing away the mat, expanding the space between the shoulder blades. And inhale into three leg dog. And exhale, bring the right knee into the chest, shoulders above the wrist. And inhale into three leg dog. And exhale, bring the 
right knee into the chest. And then from here, we're going to inhale, lower the right knee. And exhale, bring the right knee into the chest. Lower the right knee. And exhale, bring the right knee into the chest. Inhale, lower. And exhale, bring the right knee into the chest. And inhale, lower. And exhale, bring the right knee into the chest. And inhale into three-legged dog. And rest into child pose. So hopefully you're starting to get warmed up. So it's really important to really bring that knee into the chest, creating as much space between the knee and the floor. Really pointing the right toes away, trying to bring the heel towards the buttocks. By creating that gap, you'll be able to someday kick and flick into warrior one from downward dog. So it's the, the engagement in the core, engagement in the lower, expanding the space between the shoulder blades. And the anatomic, anatomical, a phrase of that, pushing away the mat through the arms, expanding the space between the shoulder blades, tucking the lower abs in, is called protraction, if you're interested. Yes. So now we're going to do the left side. Yes. So come into downward dog, place the feet together, and inhale, raise the left leg. Once again, the foundation is not the left leg, it's the right leg. Okay. So if the hamstrings are tight, of course the right knee can be bent. Squeezing the right quads, lifting the right knee caps up, Pushing away the mat, bringing the head through the upper arms, and exhale, bring the left knee into the chest, moving the shoulders above the wrist. Yes, hold here. Try to bring the left knee into the chest, pointing the left toes yeah, towards the right. Yeah. And then try to bring the left heel towards the left buttocks, pushing away the mat, expanding the space between the shoulder blades, tucking the lowers in, and inhale into three legged dog. And exhale, bring the left knee into the chest, shoulders above the wrist, and inhale into three legged dog. And exhale, bring the left knee into the chest and hold. And inhale, lower the left knee. And exhale, bring the left knee into the chest. Inhale, lower. Exhale, bring the left knee into the chest. One last time. Inhale, lower. And exhale, bring the left knee into the chest. And inhale into three legged dog. And exhale, drop the knees into child pose and rest. Yes. Very good. I hope you are breathing quite. <laughs> Having difficulty. Lengthening, equalizing the length in the inhale and exhale. Then hopefully your heart rate's uh, rising. That's good. Yes, some cardio exercises. From here, we're going to up that intensity a little bit. But if you really want to take a break, if you want to do that option one, just bringing that knee down and up into the chest, bring the knee down, up into the chest, bring the knee down, up into the chest, that's okay. Or if you just want to be in plank or into a three-legged dog, that's fine as well. Yoga, in essence, it's a self-practice. Okay, so come into downward dog. Just so you can do that. Option one, option two is place the feet together and inhale, raise the right leg. And exhale, bring the right knee into the chest. And outside the right tricep and lower to the right wrist. Inhale, up to the right tricep, into three-legged dog. Exhale, bring the right knee into the chest, outside the right tricep and lower to the right wrist. Then inhale up to the tricep, into three-legged dog. Exhale, bring the right knee into the chest, outside the right tricep, lower to the right wrist, hold it, and inhale up to the tricep, exhale, lower. And inhale up, and exhale, lower. Inhale up, and exhale, lower. Then inhale, into three-legged dog, and exhale, drop the knees, and rest. <laughs> yes. I wish I can play music. I need music to feel motivated, but yeah, you can't hear my voice. So no music from me. I hope you have good music in the background. So we'll do the left side, coming into downward dog. Place the feet together and inhale, raise the left leg. You can do option one. Exhale, bring the left knee into the chest, outside the left tricep, and lower to the left wrist. Inhale, up to the tricep, into three-legged dog. And exhale, bring the left knee into the chest, outside the left tricep, and lower. And inhale, up, and raise the left leg back into three-legged dog. Exhale, bring the left knee into the chest, outside the left tricep, and lower, and hold it. Inhale, up, and exhale, lower. Inhale, up, exhale, lower. Inhale, up, and into three-legged dog. And exhale, drop the knees into child pose. Very good, guys. Very good, guys. So we're going to take a break in our wrist. Yeah. So with regards to the core, the more you activate the core, the more it gets stronger, 
get fiery, and you can do more and more and more. But with the arms, with the shoulders, not necessarily. It gets tired, unlike the core. I don't know why. Yeah, that's how the body's made. So we're just gonna take a break in our wrist, and then we're gonna come into a tabletop position. Yeah. So instead of the wrist, we're gonna place the elbow shoulder width. This and and then the shoulders elbow stack and interlace the fingers, creating a fist. And then from here. We're gonna extend the legs yeah, to low plank, where you can comfortably mount the balls of the feet into the floor. And then once again, you're not arching the back, collapsing the heart, you're tucking the tailbone down to support the lower back. Now imagine you're squeezing that brick between the inner thighs or a pillow, yes, and then you're expanding the space between the shoulder blades, that protraction. Yeah, and then breathe here for three, Two, one, and exhale, lower the knees, the belly, and tuck the toes, and rest. So if you need that reminder for those who are doing the first time, you didn't do the yoga lattes last Saturday, of course, you can place the brick or the pillow between your inner thighs. Just as a reminder in how to engage those inner thighs, squats, outer hips, which supports your lower back. Yes, yeah, so tuck the toes, squeeze the quads, Lift the kneecaps up, and then tuck the tailbone down, expanding the space between the shoulders. For the second set, we're going to raise the right foot to heel height, just a little bit, pointing the toes away for five, four, three, two, one. Drop the feet, the right foot, and then raise the left foot to heel height, just a little bit, for five, four, three, two, one. Drop the feet, and drop the belly, and untuck the toes. So when you master a movement, there's minimal movement. If your legs are engaged, your cores are engaged, your shoulder girdle, that protraction is nice and engaged, you're using the whole body strength, there's minimal movement. Yeah. So we'll try that again. But when you're at a stage where you're trying to build the strength and it moves, that's okay. But what you don't want is raising the right leg and arching the back. That really strains the lower back. So, extend the, squeeze the quads, lift the kneecaps up as you tuck the toes, and lift the core. Tucking the tailbone down, expanding the space between the shoulders. Looking at the fist and raise the right foot for five, four, three, two, one. Drop the right foot, raise the left for five, four, three, two, one. Drop the left foot and drop the knees, the belly, and untuck the toes. Very good, and remove that brick. So, now we're going to do a prep to dolphin, which looks like the same uh, pose that we just did, but it's going to be a little bit shorter, where there's a little bit of a mountain, uh, a hill with your hips. So come into that plank position, but you're going to walk the feet half a foot closer to the elbows. Yes? Yeah. And then make sure the elbows are shoulder width, interlacing the fingers. Yes. And then from here, inhale, chin fist. And exhale, push away the back, bringing the head through the upper arms, looking at the toes. And inhale, chin fist. And exhale, push away the back, bringing the head through the upper arms, looking at the toes. Inhale, chin fist. And exhale, push away the back, bringing the head through the upper arms, looking at the toes. Inhale, chin fist, and exhale, push away. Another three, inhale, exhale for three. Inhale, two, exhale, two, inhale, one, exhale, one. And bring the shoulders above the elbows and drop the knees and tuck the toes and rest into child pose. Yeah, so that's the prep into dolphin. Dolphin's a great way to really strengthen the shoulder girdle. The shoulder girdle is made up of 18 muscles. So you really want to really take care of the shoulders. That gives you, provides you with all these kind of different movements compared to the other joints in the body. So we really want to protect, but also strengthen that shoulder girdle. 
And because shoulder girdle is not just to be able to do that forearm pincha someday, but it's really important to someday, if you're doing any sports like tennis or basketball, baseball, whatever movement. Yeah, as we are, when we're young, we tend to use momentum, but as we get older, we really want control in the movement with the necessary right strength. Yeah, and then by practicing this, your downward dog will probably feel more restorative <laughs> by strengthening that shoulder girdle. So you may do option one. If you find that prep to a dolphin, quite challenging, of course you can do option one. Option two is a shorter stance, so a variation of a dolphin. So rather than legs extended with the little hips up, uh, up and we're coming into that tabletop position where the hips are above the knees, shoulders, elbows strap, elbows shoulder width, interlace the fingers, creating a fist. Tuck the toes and lift the knees. If your hamstrings are tight, the knees can be bent. And then inhale, chin fist. And exhale, push away the mat, bring the hip through the uppers. If you have no issues with the hamstrings, you can try to bring the heels down towards the floor, looking at the navel. Inhale, chin fist. And exhale, push away the mat, bring the hip through the uppers, looking at the toes or the navel. Inhale, chin fist. And exhale, push away the mat, bring the hip through the uppers, looking at the navel or the toes. And inhale, chin fist. And exhale, push away. Inhale for three. Exhale for three. Inhale for two. Exhale for two, one last one. Inhale for one and exhale for one and drop the knees and rest. Very good, very good. Okay, so for the third set, yeah, so we're going to come into a, the low plank but with the four like sphinx, yeah, like sphinx. But when your shoulder go, girdle is weak, there's a tendency where the fingers start coming together and the elbows start widening out yeah, from the sh away from the shoulder. Yeah. So if that's what happens, then interlace the fingers, creating a fist. Because when the fingers start coming together, you know, where you're starting to create a triangle more than sphinx, your shoulder girdle starts to roll in and that starts to create a strain in the shoulder joint, kinetic chain to the elbows, down to the wrist. So if that's the case where you feel like you're starting to create a triangle, then interlace the fingers creating a fist instead. So it's up to you. So if you want to challenge yourself, well the elbows are shoulders width, and then hands on the floor like sphinx, or you can interlace the fingers creating a fist. And come into low plank. Yeah, where you're comfortably able to dig the balls of the feet into the floor and tuck the tailbone down, expand the space between the shoulder blades. And then inhale, come forward. If it's fist, chin fist, and exhale, push away the mat, bring the head through the upper arms, and inhale, chin fist, or just lean forward, and exhale, bring the head through, and then inhale, chin fist, and exhale, push away, and then inhale, chin fist, or lean forward, and exhale, push away, inhale, and exhale, inhale, and exhale one last time, inhale, and exhale, and then elbow, shoulders, and drop the knees, and rest into child pose. Very good. So come into downward dog. and then he'll raise the right leg into his three-legged dog. And then look between the hands as you exhale, step the right foot forward and then hold here. So you're like in a crescent lunge type of stance where you're the left balls of the feet into the floor. So when you transition into warrior three, when your heart's away from the knee and the ankle, you need quite a momentum to feel that stability into warrior three. So what you want to do is bring the left foot closer where you, the whole left sole of the feet is on the floor. And now probably most likely your heart is tracking the knee and the ankle. And then from here, hands on the floor for this yoga lattice. It can be fingertips or hands on the floor or you can place the hands on the brick. And then from here, lift the left foot. Bend the right knee. 
And then if you feel nice and stable, placing the right hand behind your buttocks to see if your hips are square. And then from here, inhale, push away the mat through the right foot, squeezing the right quads, suction all the way into the banda, making sure your hips are flat. And exhale, lower by bending that knee and inhale, re-engage, squeezing the right quads, the inner thighs, suction all the way to Uddiyana Bandha as you push away the mat through the right foot. And exhale, release, bending the right knee. And once more, inhale, squeeze the right quads, lifting the right knee, caps up, suction, Uddiyana Bandha, keeping the hips square. And exhale, drop that left foot and come into downward dog. And we'll do the other side. And place the feet together. And inhale, raise the left leg into three-legged dog. Look between the hands as you exhale. Step the left foot forward. Left knee above the left ankle. Or you're digging the right balls of the feet into the floor. And then stay here. So for here, to feel a little bit more stability, to give you a tip, a trick in how to feel more stable in transitioning into warrior three, bring the right foot closer so the right sole of feet is on the floor where your heart, knee, ankle is tracking now. And then placing the hands, fingertips, or placing the hands on the brick. And then inhale, kick the right foot and left knee bent. If you feel stable, place the left hand behind the hips. Just make sure that the hips are square, flat. And then from here, inhale, push away the mat through the left foot, squeezing the left quads and lifting the left knee cap up. Really suction Udiyanabhaya. And exhale, bend the knee and release. And inhale, push away the mat through the left foot, squeezing the left quads. Really suction Udiyanabhaya. And exhale, release. And inhale, push away the mat through the left foot, squeezing the left quads, lifting the left kneecaps up, suction Uddiyana Bandha, and drop the right foot, and come into child pose. So really do understand the difference between warrior three and half moon. So when there's a weakness in the outer hips, the outer right hips, when you're doing warrior three, then it becomes half moon, where that left hip starts to rise. So you really want to have the strength in the right hips, the right paws, inner thighs to keep the alignment of that hips. Same thing on the other side. And so if there's a weakness in the left hip, that right hip starts to rise and you start opening up into the half moon. So making sure you're really engaging your inner thighs, your quads, outer hips to keep the hips flat if that makes sense. <laughs> so now, come into downward dog. We're gonna do some eh, strength for that outer hips. Yes. So come into downward dog and place the feet together and inhale, raise the right leg. Look between the hands as you exhale, step the right foot forward and pivot the outer edge of the back foot parallel to the short end of the mat. One and a half leg leg, warrior two. And inhale, come up into that warrior two. And place the hands on the waist and inhale, straighten the right leg and square the feet. Yeah. So for goddess pose, we turn the feet out where the toes are pointing uh, one o'clock and then the left toe facing 11 o'clock. So make sure when you're uh, bending the knees, making sure you're not arching the back where your bum is sticking out, and you still are engaging your core, tucking the tailbone down so the low back is nice and flat. And also your head is not moving far, preferably the back of the head and the spine, the back of the hip is in a straight line. Suction Udiyana Bandha, lifting the lurkage from the hips, engaging the back muscles, and exhale, lower to your comfortable range, and inhale, come out, and exhale, lower, and inhale, come out, and exhale, lower, and inhale, rise, and exhale, lower, and inhale, up, and exhale, lower, and inhale, up, in, exhale, lower, and inhale, up, and exhale, lower, and bob, pulse for five, four, three, two, one, and inhale, come out, and exhale. Place the feet out of the outer edge of the feet parallel to the short end of the mat. And then from here, bend the left knee 
and then you're coming into a side low squat and then you're going to point the right toes or you're on the right heels yes and then bring the sit bones all the way down to the floor yes so from here with the right leg straight left foot yeah in front with the left knee bent we're going to place the right hand behind the right hip with the arm straight and then from here we're going to go into wild thing so you're going to push away the mat through the left foot to lift the right hip up pointing the right toes away as you really open the heart and exhale lower the hips down but it's not all the way down you're still hovering that right hip and inhale push away the mat through the right foot squeezing the quads the inner thighs push away the mat through the left foot the right sole of feet and exhale lower and inhale open and exhale lower and inhale open and exhale lower and inhale open and exhale lower and then come into downward dog so we'll do the other side okay so place the feet together and inhale raise the left leg into three-legged dog and exhale step the left foot forward only left knee above the left ankle pivot the outer edge of the right foot parallel to the short of the mat heels to heels inhale into warrior two yes and exhale for nothing and inhale straight in the left leg and square the feet yes for the goddess pose once again and the outer edge of the feet is not parallel to the short in the mat the toes are turned out yes and then from here bend the knees making sure you're not arching the back yeah. dumping your heart yeah. you're tucking that tailbone down so the low back is nice and flat so using the back muscle to lift the lower cage of lips suction again on a suction lower ribs and then exhale lower and inhale up and 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 exhale lower inhale up and exhale lower and pulse for five four three two one and inhale come out yes and then exhale this time and bring the toes in so the outer edge is parallel to the short end of the mat and bend the right knee into that low side squat and then you're coming onto the left heels bring your left toes up and then lower the hips down if you just want to just roll down that's fine and then make sure the right ankle and the right knee tracks and then from here placing the left hand outside the left hip use the strength in the right foot the inner thighs the quads and the left leg as you lift the bum up into a thing okay, so you now when you start raising try to bring the left sole of the feet on the floor using the inner thighs the quads out here to lift the hips opening the heart and exhale lower inhale open and exhale lower inhale open and exhale lower inhale open and exhale lower. one last time inhale open and exhale lower and rest whether it's resting on your belly or resting on your back and breathe slow down the breath take a sip of water if you want okay good so for the next one we're going to do hand stand alignment yes you heard handstand not headstand not forearm stand handstand but we're not going to actually uh, do the actual handstand where you're on the hands it's all about alignment and this can be done by lying on the back and it's actually it looks very simple but super effective in creating a six pack someday yeah, you'll definitely feel it yeah. so we need two uh, bricks here if you don't have a brick then of course you can use two pillows instead so when uh, I, as I said in the first yoga lattes in all the poses we use the inner thighs the quads outer hips and this is automatically done by 
You're squeezing that brick, we're squeezing the pillow. So the maximus, when you engage the inner thighs, the quads, the outer hips, it supports the lower back. But when you start squeezing the maximus, the fatty part of the glutes, more than 50%, it shoots pain to the lower back. So by squeezing the inner thighs, the quads, the outer hips, the maximus is still wobbly. It's, you can jingle, jingle, jingle. It's only 50% maximum by engaging the inner thighs, the quads, the outer hips. But there is an exception to that rule. Only in inversion, only in inversion, we squeeze also the maximum, 100%. Imagine there's a point between the butt buttocks and you're squeezing that. So by doing that, can you see that my pubic bone goes forward even more? So to creating that straight alignment. So we really, in the inversion practice, we need to engage the maximus as well. Yeah. So we have one brick on the flat side, on the low side. Yeah. And then we're going to lie down with the hips on the floor. Yeah. Knee bent, feet on the floor. And we're gonna lift the hips, sorry, scratch that. Sorry, scratch that, I'm sorry. So first we're going to place one of the brick on our shoulder blades. So the bottom edge of the brick is kissing the bottom shoulder blades. The bottom edge of the brick is kissing the and bottom of the shoulder blades. So the brick is definitely below your top shoulders. Yes, yeah. So allow yourself to lie down and the bottom edge of the brick is kissing the bottom part of your shoulder blades. And then from here, lift the hips and place the other brick fully on the buttock. So it's not on the sacrum, the flat bone, the reverse triangle, it's fully on your maximus. And legs straight, toes pointing down, and drop the head down here. So before you do anything, really squeeze the inner thighs, the quads, outer hips, and then squeeze your maximus. Imagine there's a coin between the buttock side and you're squeezing them. Once you do that, lift the toes to heel it just a little bit. So the ankle, knees, outer hips is all in a straight line. And from here, lift the head. Yeah. Suction, with the anapa, suction lower ribs. And of course you can stay. If you have no issue with the shoulders, arms alongside the ears. And breathe here for five, four, three, two, one. And exhale, lower the heel and head down and release. Did you all feel that? Your six pack really being engaged, really being activated. Okay, so we'll do that twice more. If you just want to take a break, that is fine. So first, before we do anything, legs together, toes pointing down. And then really imagine there's a coin between the buttocks and squeezing that, squeezing the inner thigh, squeezing the outer hips, yeah, squeezing the quad. And lift the heel just a little bit. So the ankle, knee, outer hips, track. And then lift the head, suction again, I want to suction lows. Of course, you can be here, arms alongside. If it's okay, arms alongside the ears, and you're pushing away the mat. I mean, push, pulling the fingers away, expanding the space between the shoulders where you can feel the space between the shoulders kissing that brick for five, four, three, two, one. And exhale, really. Yeah. So with the handstand, it's really important to do that protraction. Yeah, we're, and imagine you're trying to dive into a pool. Yeah. So you're trying to expand the space between the shoulders, tucking the lower ribs in. Yeah. Yeah, so, and then from here, actually you're leaning forward, but in order to come up straight, it is helped by squeezing the maximus to help you lift up so you're in that straight line. So if you're just diving down, expanding the space, your shoulders and your head will be leaning forward. But it is helped by squeezing that coin between the buttocks line as if you're, yeah, to come into that straight line. So we'll do that third set. Yes. So legs together, toes pointing down, 
head relax, set upon the floor at the moment. Imagine you're squeezing that coin between the buttock side, the inner thighs, the quads, outer hips, and lift the toes just a little bit, three millimeters. And then lift the head, suction, the Yanabata suction lowers. Of course, you may be here, really feeling the space between the shoulder blades, expanding or arms alongside the ears for five, four, three, two, one. And exhale, release. Well done. Well done. <laughs> well done. I hope you guys are nice and warm in the body, sweating a little. So we have 15 minutes. So the last 15 minutes, we're going to do some conditioning exercise. Again, yes, again, you might feel like, oh God, but this is yoga lattes. Yeah. So we're going to uh, do lolasana, a prep to lolasana. So this lolasana helps you to uh, jump back, jump through someday in Ashtanga class and it also helps you with the strengthening in your arm balance as well. And it expands the space between the shoulder blades, even with that crow, etc., etc. those crazy arm balance as well. So we're gonna be in a kneeling position, Japanese sit. We're not gonna be here too long. So for those who have tightness in the ankle, I'm sorry that you have to sit on your ankle. And then from here, of course, if you wanna challenge yourself, you can place the hands on the mat. Fingers and knees are tracking. If you want the extra help, because you have the weakness in your core, weakness in the arm, of course you're more than welcome to place the hands on the brick. Okay, so but the fingers are tracking your knees. So from here, uh, the drishti, the gaze is looking down between your inner kneecaps. Okay, and then from here, you're using the tops of the feet, the shin, to push away the mat, including engaging your core, engaging your shoulder girdle, pushing away the mat, suction, yanapana. So you want the chest thigh connection as much as you can. So from here, pushing away the mat through the feet, shin, pushing away the mat through the arms to lift the knee to bring that chest thigh connection. Yeah. Sorry if it stretches your ankles, Maybe it's a good thing for runners because you, you're always, that part is really tight. And exhale, release. Yes. So this is really important to also, uh, in terms of the engagement that you need, that chest thigh connection to tuck, jump into handstand. Yeah. So, Lulasana is good for a lot of things. So we'll try that once more. Yeah. So you're pushing away the mat through the feet, the shin, and the hands. Yeah. And then suction your Dhyanabandha, suction lower ribs, expand the space between the shoulder blades as you lift the knee, chest, thigh, connect, looking down for five, four, three, two, one, and exhale, release. So for the last Lulasana, of course, you can rest if you want to, or chest, thigh, connection, keeping the feet on the floor, or if you want up it, raise the right foot, and lower, raise the left foot, try to bring the heel towards the buttocks, and lower, and rest. Five, right, five counts, left. Or just keep the thigh chest connection or rest. Okay, inhale, push away the mat, chest thigh connection, looking down, and then raise the right foot for five, four, three, two, one, and drop. Left, five, four, three, two, one, exhale, Release uh, and lie on the back or lie on the belly. If you're lying on the back, of course, you can go into uh, hugging the knee into the chest or happy baby bringing the arms inside the bent knee, grabbing the outer edge of the feet and bring the feet up. Or you can grab the big toe first, the fingers between the big toe, second toe, thumb wrapping around the inner edge and straddling the legs out. And you can do that windshield wiping with the hips if that feels good for the lower back, for five, four, three, two, one, and exhale, release. So the next one, it's a prep to uh, Titi Basama, a firefly. 
uh, it's one of the arm balances but it's that it really needs that strength in the quads but anything that uh, and these strength in the quads helps you to lengthen your hamstrings. So we're gonna uh, straddle the legs out. If it's too much to straddle the legs out like this, then we're gonna do one leg at a time. So of course, one knee can be bent. So we'll start with the left leg. So if you, if it's okay for both legs to be out like this with both legs straight, or if it's too much, of course, the right knee can be bent, right? So the feet into the left inner thighs. And then you need a, a brick if you don't have a brick a pillow yeah so from here uh, the brick can be on the low if you really want to challenge yourself placing the brick on the medium height if you really want to challenge yourself the brick on the high side yeah. so it doesn't matter if the feet is flexed meaning toes pointing up or toes pointing down yeah so with gymnastics the toes are pointing down because it helps to really engage the quads uh, when yoga, it, uh, the feet is flexed, pointing the toes up. But it's up to you in terms of uh, if you want the toes pointing down or toes pointing up towards the sky. So from here, however the height is, so the brick uh, is between your ankle and your knees. And we're going to lift the left foot. So by lifting that left foot, you're already engaging your quads, which helps to lengthen the hamstring without stretching. And then bringing the left foot in and left foot down. Inhale up and left foot out and lower yes yes yeah so once again inhale lift the left foot bring the left foot into the center and drop inhale up and then bring it out and exhale lower one last time inhale lift and then bring the knee feet in and lower exhale and then inhale up out and exhale and then do the other side, yeah? So both legs can be straight or left knee bent, left sole of the feet in the inner thighs, so you can do it lower, medium, or high, yeah. Yes, so, oh yeah, the hands, I'm sorry. So the hands are behind. If you feel like you have the weakness in the lower back where you can't, you, you don't have enough strength in the lower back to keep the chest lifted, yeah, collarbone open to be able to lift. Yeah, of course, you can place the hands behind, fingers pointing towards the back or fingers pointing towards the toes, whatever feels good for you. And then from here, inhale, lift, in, and exhale, lower. Inhale, up, and then out, and exhale, lower. Inhale, up, in, and exhale, lower. Inhale, up, out, and exhale, lower. Inhale, up. In, exhale, lower. Inhale, up, out, and exhale, lower. Yeah. So this will really help in strengthening the quads, which gives you an added bonus in alleviating, lengthening the hamstrings without a stretch. So this is that prep to a, a variation of L-sit. Yeah. So for the second set, yeah, of course, you're more than welcome to place the hands on the mat, or if you feel like you need that little bit of a lift, you can place the hands on the brick. Yeah. So with uh, this variation of L-sit, the hands are between your knees and your hips. Yeah. And then from here, pushing away the mat through the brick or through the mat to lift the hips up. Yes. Toes can be pointing down or feet flex for five, four, three, two, one, and exhale lower. Okay. So we're going to do the other side, placing the hands outside the right thigh. Okay. I'm sorry. So whatever you're doing, okay, so if you're doing placing the hands, okay, one in, inside the left inner thighs, one outside the left thigh, then you're going to do the other side, placing the hands outside the right thigh, placing the other hand on the inner thigh. Yes. So with here, when you're lifting, pushing away the mat, there's that suction with the and then tucking the lower in, pushing away the mat through the arms. But at the same time, as you lift, you're bringing the bums up and back. Okay. So inhale, push away the mat to lift the bum up, and then trying to bring the hips back 
So your heels are going then forward towards the hips for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, release. Okay, so for the first set, you're more than welcome to do option one that you want to lift up and out, down, up, in, and out. Or if you want to do a second set of yeah, a variation of L set, if you want to lift the heels, lift one heel, lift one the other heel, or you can lift both heels up if you want to. Yeah, so inhale, yeah, left side. So the hands between the inner thighs, left inner thighs, and the other hand outside the left, left outer hips, between your knees and your hips. And inhale, push away the mat, lifting the hip, then pointing the toes down if you wanna bring the hips up, or you can lift left foot, drop, lift the right foot, drop, or both feet. For five, four, three, two, one, exhale, breathe. Oh, when it's hard, it's so hard to talk and breathe. So we'll do the other side. Placing now the hand outside the right hip, placing the other hand inside the left, I mean right inner thighs. And you're more than welcome to do option one, option two, or with me. And inhale, push away the mat through the hands, suction Dhyana Bandha, or you can stay here or lift the right foot. Drop, lift the left foot, drop, or lift both heels if you want to for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, release, and lie down into Shavasana. Now if you want to do some supine twist or come into happy baby before the Shavasana, you may. And then for those who are playing that upbeat music, this is a chance to turn off the lights if you want to, change the music to something nice and relaxing, yeah, to a chill out music that you really like. Yeah, so allow yourself to come into a space where you can slow down the breath, letting go of the effort in the breath. Letting go of the drishti, the gaze by closing the eyes. Letting go of any effort in the body. Shavasana is a time to luxuriate. So if the body is whispering to you, to doze into sleep, allow yourself to indulge in that. Yeah, so it's no need to force yourself to be in the gap where you're awake, but not in that gap. So if you feel like you want to indulge yourself in what feels so good for the body, allow yourself to melt, sinking deeper and deeper into your inward journey.
now to continue. To be in Shavasana, do so. Listening to the whispers from within. <laughs> 